What's going on, comic book movie fans? My name is Jonathan. This is Comic Book Cinema, and today we're going to discuss Wonder Woman 1984. So I actually rewatched this movie over the weekend, uh, mainly because I was bored and I was flying back and forth from Mississippi to Oregon. It just happened to be one of those movies that I had in my downloads for whatever reason. So since I watched this film over the weekend, we're going to talk about it. So this makes the second time that I've actually watched this film. The very first time that I watched it, I was with my sister, my wife, at the time, my super, super young daughter. I mean, at that point, I think she was only like six or seven months old. And I was also with my sister's three daughters as well. So while watching this film for the first time with all these females, there was something special about it. And the very first watch through, I enjoyed the film. I had a good time with it. I'm not saying it was an eight or anything like that. No, it had lots of problems. Lots of problems that I was very vocal about while I was watching it with this crowd the first time. But overall, the very first watch through, I had a decent time with it. As the months began to pass, I thought more and more about the film and I started to think a lot more negatively about it, just overall. Maybe a lot of the influencers or, or commentators for comic book films influenced that direction that I took a lot, but somewhere along the way in my mind, this movie dropped to like super low territory, quite possibly lower than it deserved. Which brings me to now. My rewatching of this film because I was just absolutely bored and had nothing else better to do. And it was kind of also like out of necessity because I didn't have anything else downloaded in my downloads on HBO Max. Or maybe it was Apple, the Apple thing. Anyway, I just want to say that I love how the movie starts off. This portion of the film was just as impactful on me now as it was the very first time watching it with all the females that I watched it with for the first time. Very heartfelt stuff and uh, very inspirational. Very cool scene. And her mom holds her back and everything, and she's like, no, you can't cheat to win. But I really love how that sequence starts off. I think it's a really great start to this movie. Then we meet Barbara Minerva. This is probably one of my first big issues with this film. I like Kristen Wiig. I think she's hilarious. Probably one of my favorite actresses on SNL in the past 20 years. With that being said, she was not a fit for this role at all. I get what they were trying to do. They were trying to really show that transformation. And don't get me wrong, she's a great actress. But she just doesn't fit this role. This is more of DC cramming people that they think they can make work in a role and audiences find that task of them doing that very impressive. But in the end, it doesn't work out. The same with Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. I feel like, and I might be completely wrong about this, but I feel like DC and Warner Brothers looked at that as a challenge. Because in the past, you know, there's been outcry and outroar over castings that ended up turning out to be fantastic. Look at Heath Ledger. Look at Michael Keaton. But in this particular scenario, and the Eisenberg scenario, it just didn't work out. Kristen Wiig does a really good job of playing that first version of Barbara. The version of Barbara that's super nerdy and is a loser and is socially awkward. I'm not saying that Kristen Wiig is socially awkward or a loser by any stretch of the means. I'm just saying that that was more natural fit for her personality than a merciless, superpowered cheetah. So that's the first big problem with the film. So then we're introduced to Maxwell Lord, as played by Pedro Pascal, and soon after we're introduced to the Dreamstone, which is what his character is after in this film. Apparently he's done lots of research on the stone. He wants to get his hands on the stone so he can take over the world. And another bit that I forgot to mention before we get too far into the film, the opening sequence is almost like a, and I'm, when I say the opening sequence, I'm not talking about what we just discussed earlier with Diana as a little girl. I'm talking about the opening sequence where we're in the mall in the 80s, very fitting, and she stops the heist or the, the, the robbery, you know, the guys that are trying to steal the black market items, whatever the case may be. I thought that was really well done. It was almost like that's what they were going for in Superman 3, but they didn't quite accomplish it because they got a little too goofy in Superman 3, but here in this film, it's done very well because you have a lot of that cheesiness that works. Still, it, it still works. 
you have that comedy which works very well and it's a very fun opening sequence. Now let's talk a little bit more about Maxwell Lord and this plot device. I wasn't a big fan of the Dreamstone. I think that that Dreamstone just in itself, the concept of it, <laughs> what it can do, you know, granting wishes to people, things like that, that's probably what dragged this film down big time. One of the things. But if you want to make a list, it would definitely be on the top of that list. Like I mentioned earlier, Kristen Wiig's role as the Cheetah, Minerva, whatever you want to call her, that's another thing you can put on the top of this list. And the third item that I just have to mention is how Wonder Woman, Princess Diana, whatever you want to call her, Diana Prince, I'm sorry, Diana Prince, not Prince, <laughs> not Princess Diana, but she makes the wish, she's like, I really miss Trevor, is that his name, Steve Trevor? Yeah, Steve Trevor. I really miss Trevor, I want him to come back. And she makes that wish, and he comes back, but the way they bring him back is just so wrong in so many different levels. So basically, her making this wish makes Steve Trevor come back in someone else's body. And when she meets this person, and you know, they meet each other, they're so happy, but at the end of the day, he's in a different body, and it's so messed up. I know that there's not many men out there that wouldn't mind being raped <laughs> by Wonder Woman or Gal Gadot, but this is so wrong. <laughs> and it's just overlooked by a lot of people, especially people that, that like this film. <laughs> Wonder Woman has unconsensual sex with this guy multiple times, like laid up in the bed with this dude, butt naked. God knows what they did while Steve Trevor is in the body of this other person. So that presents a very huge, or as Donald Trump would say, huge dilemma here. <laughs> and I don't know what the writers were thinking when they, when they decided to put this in the movie. Like, why couldn't you just bring Steve Trevor back in Steve Trevor's body, you know? Why did you have to go with this little side plot, which is so odd. And it's so odd that both of them are just completely cool with, with, with doing what they do here. So it was a very odd decision making creatively, and I think that that's, this is, like I said, you make that list, you have Kristen Wiig playing Minerva, you have the Dreamstone, then you have this decision right here. Creatively, man, this was a bad decision. I will say this though, there's some really, really cool action sequences in this movie, and if you guys watched this channel before, you know that for me personally, good action sequences, with the exception of the final action sequence, but we'll talk about that here in just a second. But there's a lot of really cool action sequences. The scene where Wonder Woman is, is trying to get to Maxwell Lord, and he's got this security detail that he just stole from the uh, Saudi guy that's got the oil and all this power and whatnot. It's his security team. That was a really cool scene. I'm not particularly huge on superhero movies that take the powers away from our protagonist. And that's what we get here. She's starting to slowly lose her powers because she made the wish to get Steve Trevor back. Steve Trevor's kind of back, just in a different body, but she's completely okay with it. She's been making out with a guy and getting on top of him. <laughs> I'm going to make way too many jokes about that. But yeah, I love this action sequence. Great stuff. Like I said earlier, the whole wish thing just doesn't really play out too well on camera. It ends up making things a lot cheesier for the worst. Also, a lot of people commented on her chicken armor, which, touche, rightfully so. I'm not a huge fan of it either. I mean, you know, it doesn't look terrible to me. Just like the film. The film is not terrible. Okay, let's get that straight right now. This is not a terrible film. Now, everyone's got their own opinions about films. I understand that, and I'm totally cool with that. You may love this movie, or you may hate this movie, and that's okay. We are all different people that are built differently. And if you like this film, it's cool. I personally don't love this film. Definitely don't love this film. I don't hate this film, but I think that it's, it's not very impressive. I'll just say that. So it's not until the end of the movie when everything's in chaos and Steve Trevor in another man's body, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned that yet already or not, but Steve Trevor in another man's body tells Wonder Woman, he's like, look, you gotta let me go. You have to let me go so you can get your full powers back and face this uh, cheetah individual and save the day. So she lets Steve Trevor go, and that's when she gets her full powers back. And that's when she breaks out the chicken suit, like we just mentioned earlier. The final action sequence 
leaves a lot to be desired. Patty Jenkins is good at a lot of things in film. The first Wonder Woman film was remarkable. Even though it was basically a carbon copy of the first Captain America film, I still really loved it a lot. I thought that there was a lot of things to love about that movie. She still gives us a lot of good moments here in this film as well, inspirational moments, which I like. And you can tell stylistically it's directed by a female because of how graceful Wonder Woman is. And it's just different, you know what I'm saying? Like the action is different, which most of the film, like I said, I don't mind. But here at the end, the action sequence is just really just meh, just meh. You know, like it's, there's nothing special about it. And things also wrap up really quickly and conveniently. And I guess that's not an uncommon practice in the superhero movie world, but it was a very underwhelming ending. I will say that it did, you know, if people rate films on how much they make a person feel, there was multiple times in this movie where I, I, I felt myself kind of getting a little teared up. I was like, dang, this is, this is good stuff. You know, at the very end when Maxwell Lord realizes what he's become, which we've seen that before in comic book movies as well, but he realizes what he's become. He's like, I got to go find my son. He finds his son, they share a warm embrace, I mean, but overall the film just doesn't really like, it wraps up so quickly and conveniently, and I guess at that point they kind of had to because the movie was already two and a half hours. But I don't know, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm just kind of left thinking like, meh, like that's kind of how I felt about the whole entire movie. There were some cool bits, and even when Kristen Wiig first became the cheetah, I guess it was kind of fun in a bad way. <laughs> To see her kick that uh, that dude's butt that was picking on her the first bit of the movie, or not picking on her, but you know, catcalling and trying to get her to come here, baby, <laughs> come here, come talk to daddy. I'll give the film a 4.5. Like I said, there's some aspects of this movie that are pretty decent, pretty cool, but it just falls flat. Things get really cheesy really quick with the Dreamstone. So yeah, that's kind of my feelings on it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. We usually drop two videos a week. Some weeks we drop three videos. Check us out on TikTok and Instagram. You can find us there at Real Comic Book Cinema. You can also find us on Facebook. Guys, until next time, thank you so much for joining me and have a good one.